to see that. Everyone knows the spin-off is the truest form of flattery. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 spin-off movies. For this list, we're taking a look at those films that follow secondary characters or exist in the same universe as the films that preceded them. These movie spin-offs are really the best of the worst, since there weren't too many good options as far as quality spin-offs go. You'd think Hollywood would have milked this idea to death by now. The f you waiting for, bitch? Start sucking. Bonging. Number 10, U.S. Marshals, spin-off of The Fugitive. Excellent work, young man. On its own, U.S. Marshals is not a bad movie. But when compared to 1993's The Fugitive, a critically acclaimed film that earned Tommy Lee Jones an Oscar, it barely gets a C for effort. Oh, that's bullshit. Sure, there's plenty of action and pretty cool fight scenes. We also get to see Wesley Snipes hop a train like the IRS is after him. On second thought, that would have made for a more interesting sequel. Righteous. Very righteous. Deputy, do you have anything to add? No. Anything to add? a lot of questions to be asked. Number 9. The Tigger Movie. Spin-off of the Winnie the Pooh franchise. Winnie the Pooh? Wait half a darn minute. He's sort of clumsy, he can bounce on his tail, and he's finally been given the spotlight. Throughout the Pooh franchise, Tigger has always been that friend who's constantly screwing things up, but that you keep around because he's fun. I wonder why nobody wants to bounce with me. <laughs> In this kid's flick, Tigger is on the hunt for a family of his own. Surprise! It's a cute little film that you can watch with the youngins. That is, if you can tolerate your younger siblings for a 90-minute stretch. T-T-F-E. Ta-ta. Forever. Number 8. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Spin-off of Clerks. Jay and Silent Bob are stupid characters. A couple of stoners who spout dumbass catchphrases like a third-rate Cheech and Chong or Bill and Ted. F Jay and Silent Bob them up their stupid asses. Set in Kevin Smith's View a Universe, which basically means you're gonna see Ben Affleck and Jason Lee in the same movie. Hell yeah, bitch. The film follows the misadventures of the titular twosome as they head for Hollywood. Any movie based on Jane Silent Bob are gonna lick balls because they both in fact lick balls. Mother If you hadn't grown tired of Jane Silent Bob in any of their previous iterations, you may get a kick out of watching them on screen as they elude the police and crash film sets. All right, you bastard, let's see who you really are. Fucking mm. Miramax, cut! Number seven, The Chronicles of Riddick, spinoff of Pitch Black. If watching Vin Diesel skulk around in the darkness and pitch black was enough to whet your appetite, then consider the film spin-off a full sci-fi meal. Is that all? Then you missed the good part. While Black may have had Riddick fighting monsters in the dark, this film sees him pitted against absolutely terrifying religious space colonizers called Necromongers. While it wasn't much of a box office hit, Riddick has found a cult following among fans. Number 6, Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa, spin-off of the Jackass franchise. I'm uh, I'm afraid I have some bad news. Your wife, she took a turn for the worse last night and um she passed away. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I thought she'd never die. It's the spin-off no one asked for, but we've honestly seen worse. As if the world hadn't gotten enough hidden camera shock value antics from the Jackass crew, this spin-off is here to remind you that they'll never stop. <laughs> Ever. An old man, or just Johnny Knoxville in prosthetics, and a young boy embark on a road trip with a dead body in the trunk. And as you can guess, hijinks ensue. <laughs> Number 5. This is 40, 
spinoff of Knocked Up. I do not want to investigate your anus. It's payback time. Katherine Heigl's somewhat unhappily married sister and brother-in-law stole the show enough in Knocked Up to warrant a spinoff. Lady Harvey! I did it! Get her back! And since Judd Apatow clearly loves seeing his cute kids and wife role-playing with another dude on screen, he obliged. And to tell the truth, we're not really complaining. The movie's not bad, if you can relate to the first world problems of an upwardly mobile yuppie couple on a visceral level. Don't put that kind of pressure on me. All sarcasm aside, it's definitely good for some genuine laughs. We are young people. We don't need medication to have sex. I only took it because it's your birthday. I thought you'd like it. Happy fucking 40th birthday. Number four, The Born Legacy, spinoff of The Born Identity. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Welcome back. Thanks. This film takes place after Jason Bourne blows the whistle on the whole illegal CIA programs thing. So we just have to find him fast and kill him once and for all. Not to be deterred in their quest to create the perfect soldier, this black ops group must apparently kill everyone involved in the previous programs to keep everything hush-hush. That pretty much brings us to super soldier Aaron Cross, who's on the run to avoid being massacred in the name of government secrets. Seems easy enough. <laughs> Number three, Get Him to the Greek, spin-off of Forgetting Sarah Marshall. This is your f***ing moment. You only get one moment in life. This is not hiding in some cubicle answering some f***ing phone. Can you handle it? Yeah, I can handle the moment. Although Jonah Hill did appear in Forgetting Sarah Marshall as a waiter slash groupie of Aldous Snow, his role in Greek is completely revised. Aldous Snow is one of the last remaining rock stars. With all due respect, maybe a game changer is not what we need. He plays a headhunter for a record company that's on the decline, who's been tasked with escorting rock star Aldous Snow to a concert event. Feel free to bring Professor Snape. Russell Brand reprises his role as Snow, a lascivious rocker on a drug and alcohol bender who's trying to revive his career. It's even got a cameo by Diddy. I'm uh, the shit out of you. Hope you're wearing a condom, because I have a dirty mind. Number two. The Wolverine, spin-off of the X-Men franchise. Do not apologize. It's been an honor just to meet the Wolverine. It's not who I am anymore, you understand? Everyone knows Wolverine was the most interesting character in the film versions of the X-Men. Not anymore. Apparently, Hollywood thought so as well, and ran with the idea of having a film with him as the central character. Deviating from the previous X-Men movies, we get to see Wolverine's plot unfold in Japan as he battles the Yakuza and the Silver Samurai over his immortality. There's even a surprise appearance from Professor Xavier. Hello, Logan. How is this possible? As I told you a long time ago, you're not the only one with gifts. Normally, we'd include some honorable mentions here, but honestly, there just weren't any other spin-offs that were honorable, let alone worth mentioning. We kicked those guys' asses bad. Real bad. <laughs> Number one, Puss in Boots, spin-off of the Shrek franchise. I am not looking for trouble. We may have grown accustomed to seeing him at Shrek's side in Shrek 2, but Puss had his very own story that needed to be told. What can I say? I was a bad kitty. In this spin-off, which is basically a prequel to the second Shrek movie, we see how Puss earned his boots and are given a glimpse into his past. Even without any mention of Shrek, it's a pretty good film that follows the adventures of an adorably debonair feline. No, never again. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie spin-off? Applesauce, bitch. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. I'll do lines off her forehead while I'm in her up to my nuts. Is that, if that's what you want.